Yo, yo, this is Kicking It With Infinite. My name's Infinite, and I, today I am with my guest, Tui. Hello, Hello. everybody. Welcome to the yes. podcast. Yo, 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 yo. How you Quarantine doing? podcast. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for asking. I appreciate okay. that. <laughs> <laughs> I got my coffee, so I'm happy. Yeah, I, I, I had Yerba on deck. I had yerba oh, like, yerba mates are the best. What flavor I did you get? So much. I've I've been on them. What flavor? Uh, mint. Mint's a mint. mint's, mint's a good one. I don't they have like a berry one as well? The berry mm-hmm. one's really good. Yeah, they got a couple. Of, I'm a I'm a connoisseur. Of yerba. I love actually like <laughs> when I'm in the studio. Like if I'm not trying to do coffee, but I'm still trying to like make myself happy, yeah. I'll I'll get a yerba mate and I just feel like instantly happy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is about the yerba mates, but they just they give me some endorphins, you know? Especially when they're, like, freezing cold, too. It's like... Ooh, I've never tried it. Like, a little slushy, almost. I wasn't thinking that, but that's a great idea. <laughs> oh, yeah. When they're extra cold, they're really good. But I wonder how it would be if it's, like, you know, you put it in the back of the fridge, and the fridge is really cold. I think you might have you end up having, like, little ice crystals in there. I, <laughs> I think you might have did some right now. Hold up. <laughs> Hold up. You know, we might need to get you a sponsor. You feel me? <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. So this is a question I really like to start things off with when I have artists on the show, mm-hmm. just because I feel like it's a, it's a good introduction to who you are and what you do and everything like that. So if you had to recommend a song to a random person who has no idea who you are, what song would you recommend? Like pretend I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an A&R for oh. Death Jam. I'm like, Got hey, it. I've heard a lot about you, like oh, a whole bunch of great things. Um, <laughs> I would love to hear some of your music. What would you recommend me? Okay, like my own catalog. Yes. Okay, definitely a vapor rub. Mm-hmm. To date, it's like my most, it's my favorite song I've ever done. It's fun, it's creative, and it really um, shines light on the writing here. And I'm really proud of it. So I would obviously say vapor rub, not mm-hmm. just because it's my latest release, but because I think it's a great representation of the artist I am right now mm-hmm. versus. You know, all my other songs, too, I love them, and I think they have really good qualities about them. But, of course, like, as an artist, you always want to grow, and you always want to progress in what you do. And so I think Vapor Up is a good, like, depiction of my growth as an artist so far. So, yeah, I'd have to say Vapor Up. Yeah. And, yo, you know what? Speaking of Vapor Up, I just want to say congrats on all the success for it. Like, thank how you, have you so been... much. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah. you. Thank you, thank you. How have you been, like, kind of, like, handling, like, the overwhelmingly positive feedback that it's been getting um well very positively no I'm just kidding. um <laughs> no but like I re- I'm the type of person that I respond to like each person that reaches out to me like I will not leave a message unanswered unless they're like weirdos you know what I mean like they're very pushy and like not not really wanting to compliment me or whatever but to, like kind of have like an ulterior motive so I don't really like mm-hmm. I don't really entertain that but as far as like everybody who like messages me, like, you know, I love the song or you doing so awesome. Or like even the ones that have stuck with me from the beginning till now they're like, and they see the progression and they just want to compliment me on that. Like I make sure to respond to each and every message. And so I think that's really important as an artist too. If you're trying to build like a fan base, I know for me that's worked really well is just to have a genuine connection with your fans um it goes a long way and although like it's it, social media is exhausting like it's a job in itself and you know that you have your own um thing that you do with if it's hot it's hot or if it's not it's not you know so i mean like it takes a lot of brain power and energy to put your energy into that so a social media in itself is a job and so um when you're building your brand like you have to connect with your with your group you know what I mean you have to like reach out and you you can't be too like oh I'm too big or whatever to respond back to people sorry this is like an open-ended question and I'm just like going off but like I think it's really important because I I like I love my fans like genuinely wholeheartedly like I think it's so fucking cool that people from all over the world even hear my music which is awesome I think like the fact that music can travel so far is just mind-blowing you know and like people from like I don't know like people who don't even speak English and who listen to my music and I'm like what the hell this is crazy Mm -hmm. so I have to like show love to to them and to all my fans for that matter so 
yeah i mean what was the question <laughs> uh, it was just like how you're handling like the the positive um feedback from vapor rub but like i will say like since we already kind of like switched to a different topic right real, real quick yeah. like um like how like talking to your fans is very important i've actually experienced that firsthanded because my little sister is actually a really big fan of you and uh -huh. it was prior to us working together with uh without you so uh -huh. Like usually whenever I work with someone and like, I'm like, oh yeah, this is amazing. I put my family on. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so I got like a big family. I got like four sisters, bro. So really? yeah, yeah. Three of them are younger than me too. So it's like, okay, that's funny. That's, Cause I have four brothers. That's hilarious. That's, I have a big family. I have four yeah. brothers and a sister. I have, I have four sisters and a brother. What? I swear on my life. <laughs> Dude, you know, what's crazy is that we're all two months apart. Oh really? Okay. We ain't, we ain't like that. Like we're really like <laughs> close. Well, not two months apart. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know what I was saying. I, like, we're not all two months apart, but, like, our birthdays are two months apart. The years are obviously different, but, like, we'll have um, – I'm sorry. I'm tired. It's good. It's good. Hey, <laughs> I need to learn how to be. Okay, so, for example, the like, good. <laughs> so there's six of us, right? But there's two that are born in um, September, two that are born in October, and two that are born in November. Uh -huh. We're, like, all really, really close. Who's the ones in, in age? Huh? Who's the ones in November? So my sister Lisa and my brother Long. Oh, okay. I'm in October. Uh, okay. October, baby. I was hoping that we were going to be in November together. I was, like, Wait, when's your birthday? Like, uh, November 25th. Okay, got it. You yeah. are a Sagittarius? No. Yeah, yeah, you got it right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I see. Wait, didn't, didn't the signs like switch or something like that? I have no clue. I think it like, I think it like moved a little bit. Mm-hmm. So that if you were like whatever you're now this yeah i might be i might be a scorpio now i'm not 100 percent sure what because 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 like uh at the end of november it's like really close it's like borderline okay you're borderline scorpio sagittarius yeah it's so it's like one of the two so if it moved i might have moved in the direction of scorpio but it's like i don't really keep up with that stuff that much so i don't really yeah like, got much. it yeah. i know it's funny because like i always like to know what people are because it gives me a good insight of like who they could be as a character but like you know I'll get to obviously get to know them I take it with a grain of salt and if they're like that I'm like oh okay like that was true but if they're not I'm like oh wow like you're totally the exception you know so I think I think zodiac signs like they give a like a over like generally like generalization of like that sign or that person but then obviously people will be totally different or they'll be spot on you know yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because, like, I don't really know much about, like, Sagittarius. Mm -hmm. Like, other than they're, like, quiet and... Well, you're not really quiet. I'm, I'm hella quiet, actually. Are you quiet? Okay. Yeah. When I'm on camera, I'm, like, not quiet and stuff like that. I do yeah. try to be a little bit more extroverted, but I'm... Like, right. if you have anyone in my family, they're like, yeah, like, you don't be talking like that, bro. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I'm just... So I don't really talk that much because I'm, like, what? Oh, I said, what sign are you? I'm a Scorpio. Scorpio. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, Perfect. yeah. Scorpios are known to be like, I don't know, just like really passionate mm -hmm. and stuff. And I guess I am. Like, if I if I like obviously passionate about something, I'll just like ramble on. And yeah. I can go on for days. Definitely. But that's like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> signs are weird. Yeah, they definitely are. Like, I've never really understood the whole science behind it, especially. Okay, like I'm not gonna lie. I kind of I kind of wrote off. Uh huh. Signs, I'm like, well, that's some BS. When they started doing the rising thing, mm -hmm. so like, so I was like, okay, so like, I'm a Sagittarius, but I'm a like Capricorn, like rising or something like. Oh that. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. What, I don't understand I feel like that. that was just an excuse to be like, oh, so you don't fit this mold? Okay, well, we're gonna give you a different mold to fit, just in case. <laughs> that's that's kind of how I felt. Like I could be completely wrong because I'm very ignorant. To that's it. hilarious. Uh, no, I honestly, but, I get what you mean. I just. Like, it's all very confusing, like, and I don't quite understand it that well. Mm -hmm. We're like, because I've, I've read that I'm a double Scorpio and I'm something else. And I'm like, what does that mean? You know, like, I don't, yeah. I don't know. And, uh, it's kind of, it's kind of sketch. But um, then sometimes you read the stuff and you're like, holy shit, this is kind of spot on. This is me. But sometimes like, it'll be really, it'll be really specific. Like today you're gonna, you're gonna. I don't, I don't know. Like you're going to go outside and you're going to see a package. You know what I mean? You're like, Oh shit. Like I saw a package today. So you yeah. like contributed to that. But then sometimes it'll just be like something really weird. Like somebody from your future will come into your life and you'll, 
build this new relationship and it's like so general that it's like okay that could have been it you know so I don't know yeah yeah for sure. all right so let's switch topics a little bit I want to talk about like the people who are in your corner because you definitely have an amazing team around you what can you tell me about Fluent Gang okay so actually can I can I go back really quick to say that um, I want to send your sister something by the way um, I have like these custom vapor rub jars and then also mm -hmm. like a couple stickers. So once this is over, let her know that I'll send her something. I'll okay. get your address and everything when this is all over and stuff. It was but so funny because like, I was just like walking out, like I walked out of my room into the living room and I heard your music playing. I was like, yo, this sounds so familiar. Like what is happening right now? I was like, what is this song? It's like, oh, it's Tweet All Night. I was like, oh, oh. My God, that, song is, that <laughs> song is so popular. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure that was the introduction of like how she found out about you. And then once yeah. she told her, like, oh yeah, I actually have a song with her, blah, blah, blah. I think that's when she went just fucking crazy and she was like, okay, super fan now. <laughs> she actually did respond back to her. So you, uh, what you be saying is true. You know what I mean? There's no, I do. No rap. I always respond back to everybody because I want to like show love. You know, I want to, since you're showing me love, like I want to show love back. And, mm -hmm. I think it sets a good precedent for the future between the relationship between you guys. So, you know, it's so smart too. Very important. Um, as far as my team. So actually Foom was, okay. This is like a very, I don't know how to answer this question. So, um, when I first started making music, which was maybe around 2015, um, I met, my boyfriend who is known as Sierra Crucial mm -hmm. and I had just graduated from UC Santa Barbara and um I knew I loved to sing and all of that but at the time it was kind of just like a hobby and a passion but um when I met him he was like constantly in the studio and stuff so I was like hey like can I come to the studio or whatever you know what I mean like let me let me drop a couple bars like whatever mm -hmm. and um like fast forward my first song hands on me came out featuring sierra crucial and it did really well it got on like um, 106 um like a couple times and it just like did really good for somebody's first single you know and so before i even came into the picture he was a part of something called foom and it's um the acronym stands for forever on our money flight mm -hmm. or forever on our music flight you could, could be interchangeable um so then I kind of just got like inducted I guess yeah. into the group as like the first lady of Foom yeah. but but as like my um as I kind of like started to do my own thing I kind of just moved away from that in a sense like I don't necessarily like I don't that's not my encompassing group you know like that's more so like CR crucial yeah. Um, but of course, like I always like support and all of that. So yeah. yeah, it's like, but, but my team as of right now is definitely Charlie. Um, Charlie is CR crucial if okay. that didn't already. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then honestly, it's, it's just, it's just me and him. Like, um, you know, he answers all my emails and he helps me out with like, cause I don't like talking about like the logistics of things you know what I mean so and I get a lot of inquiries that you know whether it just be features or whether it be a and r's or like publicists or like you know what I mean all of that stuff it's hard for me to formulate something that is I don't know like it's like right now it's hard for me to like formulate a sentence sometimes you know I just like my brain is just like in all different areas but he's really grounded so he's able to answer like um the emails in a very concise matter um and just like keep it professional you know what I mean so um he handles a lot of that and then also he writes with me as well so we do a lot of things together um we have a really like it took us a while to get to being really um like harmonious while writing you know like because we had different styles of course but now it's like when we write together it's so easy uh, we kind of just know what each other are thinking um, and then also we challenge each other um, I you know sometimes I'll come with like melodies that he would have never thought of or vice versa um, or writing wise you know like I'll come up with the line and then he'll piggyback off of that so that's really just like my primary team um, 
of course I have my DJ as well. And so he, you know, travels with me to all my shows and all of that. Um, and I don't know if you know of Nico, Nico Blitz from the lunch table. Um, he, oh, I did my research. Right, what are you talking about? Yeah. So right <laughs> now he is, um, currently like he'll a and r some production for me so um if he thinks that me and a producer would work well together he'll hey what do you think about these beats you know what i mean and then i'll be like oh i like those or i don't you know what i mean and then we'll kind of move on and that's how vapor up actually came about um yeah so he knew austin sexton and so he sent me over a beat it was just one beat you know, multi, like producers were sending you over multiple beats. Nope, he sent me one beat, and then it was just perfect. It was like I I I listened to it at first, and I was just like, eh, I don't know. And then one day, I was in the car with Charlie, and we we're just driving, um, and I was like, hey, let, let's just play this beat. Let's just humor it. You know what I mean? Like, cause it's really funky. It's like hard to find a melody, but then we were just like, we just listened to it without like any um like pressure basically we're just like okay like let's just see what melodies naturally come out and then all of a sudden like and then we just came up with like a bunch of lines you know what I mean and then each line that we came up with we're like holy fuck like I think I think we did something here so anyways that's another story but yeah like Nico will basically help me with uh linking me up with different producers and stuff so that's like basically my team like I get, I got to shout out, you know, DJ cook beats. I got to shout out Charlie, Nico. Um, of course, um, Louie too helps me out with a lot of my stuff. Um, he is super talented. Yeah. You already know that he's super talented, Ooh, but, um, yeah. So my team is very small, but I feel like we're able to make a lot of noise in this industry. Like, I, I don't know. I just feel like things are really becoming real and tangible. Um, just as long as I keep applying pressure and being consistent. Yeah. So definitely, definitely. Yeah. I know that was like a long answer, but I just, it was hard for me to answer that without the whole context. Oh, I no, guess. no. We're, this is a, like a podcast. You, talking is the name of the game right now. You are doing an amazing <laughs> job. Because <laughs> like, I feel like a lot of people uh, do get really kind of like, worried about rambling and stuff like that because like I go through that too like I feel like I'd be rambling sometimes but at the same time it's like it's a podcast you're like you're like supposed to listen I ra- to yeah no I ramble a lot but hopefully I, I'm able to drop some gems for anybody out at, there, at the same can... time, all that was on topic though okay, good. <laughs> I feel like I feel like rambling is really like when you get off topic when you, if you start talking about like your dogs like midway through that it's like okay. <laughs> well I can talk about my dogs for days no I'm just kidding oh no definitely I'm sure you could like I've, I love my dogs like, your social media and stuff like that I definitely noticed that you <laughs> have a great passionate love for dogs like the show oh my gosh love yeah dogs. My dog was actually barking like dumb crazy, like right before the interview started. Really? I'm, dude, I'm surprised my dogs haven't barked. They bark like all the time. Like a leaf can move and he's like, he's about to fight somebody. Mm -hmm. I feel it. Uh, Oh, they're hella like territorial, huh? mm Mm-hmm. I feel it. Mm -hmm. What kind of dog do you have? I have a Yorkie Poodle Chihuahua. Uh So the Chihuahua part of him is super fucking yappy. And then I have a... I have a toy poodle that we took on from Charlie's mom and like, they don't really get along. So it's kind of scary. Sometimes they'll like, actually like they'll fight, Yeah. they'll fight and they'll fight over me. Cause like Ollie is mine, you know? And so Ollie will come and like, um, you show me hella love and stuff. And then Louie gets super jealous, Mm -hmm. like super jealous to the point where he's like growling at him and then they just go crazy at each other. Oh my gosh. And then trying to have dog fights is fucking terrifying. It's so (laughs) scary. Thankfully they're they're two little dogs. Yeah. So it's less scary than if they were like two big ass fucking dogs, you know, that you can't really, you kind of just let it have them. You got to let them have just like their way and just fight, fight it out. So we've tried that. We've tried to kind of let them fight it out. And one time, like, the little poodle, Louie, his, oh, I think he's coming up. His, he, we almost thought he broke his leg. Because, yeah. Hi, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, he just came up here, but then he, oh, there they are. There we Do you go. hear them? Yeah. You hear the I little, hear them, like, the scaling around the floor. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Because my and dog, then, like, um, she's, like, she's, like, hella smart. Like, 
she she knows that whenever she barks, we give her attention. Uh huh. Trying to find out what she's barking for. So if she yeah. needs to, like go to the bathroom or something like that, she'll instantly just start barking at the door. Dude. And yeah, and we're just like, oh, okay, you just need to go to the bathroom. Dogs are very smart. I taught my dog how to ring a bell to go outside, mm -hmm. and so yes. all the dogs after him notice that like, okay, every time he rings the bell, he gets to go outside. So now like just through the watching Ollie ring the bell, like everybody in the house now rings the bell. It's so weird. Oh, that's actually crazy. Wait, did mm -hmm. you like do that yourself? Did you, or did you like watch a video to like? So I watched the video, but then like, I kind of just freehanded it. Like, so like, I don't know. I, I think it's just like learning your dog, you know, and knowing yeah. like what will entice them because yeah. not every dog is the same. So not every video like encompasses like every dog. But I, I honestly, I got like carne asada because I knew he'd like that. Yeah. And like, I let, I put the bell down on the ground and at first I was like, Oh, like put your paw on it. And he wouldn't do it. So I was like, okay, how am I going to do this? So I put like a piece of carne asada right by the bell and then his nose would smell it. And so the bell would shake. And then when he was, when he would like touch the bell, even slightly, and it made like a little noise, I would give him a treat. And then they say that, um, in order for your dog to remember it, um, you have to have them do it successfully for like six times or some shit like that. Hey, you might need to help yeah. me for that video. <laughs> Cause I'm much better to hear a bell than a bark. I know. Once I, cause once I hear a bark, I immediately think there's like an intruder. Like there's, okay, but we have there's another there's dog there's here. Her name is Kiko and she's a big capper. She'll like, if you're just at the dinner table here, she'll ring the bell, but you just took her out. She just wants to go outside. So I don't know if it's like mm -hmm. okay. the greatest thing, but it's definitely better than them peeing in the house. Like, that's facts. You know? That's facts. Yep. There's a lot of things okay. like peeing in the house. <laughs> we got a little sidetrack there. I mean, it's good. Fuck it. <laughs> All right. So uh, earlier when we were talking about like your whole team and everything like that, uh -huh. uh, you mentioned that you were in college. What were your plans before doing music full time? Um, I wanted to be a pediatrician mm -hmm. and after that, I was like, oh, no, like, being a doctor's kind of strict, you know? Hey, come here. Sorry, hold on. See, Oops. he's ringing the bell, because he thinks he wants to go out. <laughs> okay. Little Oliver. Oh You're not going out, buddy. You're going to lay down Oliver. Oliver. Little baby. Oh um, I love it. So then, you know, after I graduated college, I was like, okay, I, I want to kind of, oh, hi, Charlie. You're not in it, but you can say hi. I don't know if you see his. <laughs> um, oh, do you want to I love the vid that he did with, uh, with Louis. Where What's that? Made, I love the vid that he did with Louis where they made like the sounds and made it into a whole beat. Oh, oh yeah. That's hilarious. That joy, that's just crazy. <laughs> Dude, Charlie's like the funniest person I know. Well, aside from myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he seems hella goofy. Uh, you know, I'm a little, I'm a little goober. <laughs> Okay, but what was I going to say? Okay, so I was going to be a pediatrician. I was going to be. I was planning on becoming a pediatrician. And then I realized, like, I don't know if I want such a strict lifestyle, you know? Like, I still want my life to be a little bit flexible and being able to do whatever. And then when I started, like, kind of making music more frequently, it's like, okay, I still have to have a plan B, obviously. Like, you know, I have to be rational. Um, so I was like, okay, maybe I'll be a PA, which is a physician's assistant. You're basically a doctor's assistant and you do everything the doctor does, but you have a more of a flexible lifestyle. Um, so then I, I remember like applying for PA school and like, I was literally this close to missing the deadline. And I think subconsciously in my mind, I didn't really want to do it, you know? And so I think that's what, like, pushed me from, like, getting everything in on time, making sure, like, my personal statement was A1. But I think, like, in the back of my head, I probably didn't want that life for myself. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to be in the medical field for the longest time. And, like, all my jobs were in the medical field. Like, I worked in the dental field. I worked in um, optometry, um, dermatology, like, literally everything, you know? And not, not to say that it was a waste of time. Cause I definitely learned a lot regarding like customer service and just being able to speak to people. But 
I think in a sense, like, I wish I put my all into music, but at least now I know that, like, music is my true passion, um, which is the reason why I quit my job last year. Oh, yeah, it's been, it's been a year now since I've been in L.A., so I quit my job, and I was like, I don't know, like, the start of 2019, I was like, what do you really want to do with your life? Like, you're obviously getting older, and you can't just be wishy-washy, you know what I mean? Like, you kind of have to have, like, an idea of what you want to do. Um, so I was like, fuck it, I'm going to move to LA, and I'm going to pursue music full-time, and yeah, that's what I did, and honestly, it's been the best decision I've made probably my whole life, you know? So I'm happy about that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And like, look how it's turning out. Like, you're doing yeah. all, that, all that shit, man. Yeah, it's definitely a testament to my sacrifice. So mm-hmm. I'm really, really like, if any time, if there's any time to say it now, like, I definitely would like to say I'm definitely really proud of myself for taking that risk. Like, I'm, I'm very much so a risk taker, but to take a risk like that, Mm -hmm. is very scary and a lot of people may stop themselves and stay with what's comfortable but I'm glad I didn't you know Mm -hmm. I think I would have been really unhappy so yeah yeah for sure I feel it so let's go back like a little bit like further than that too like Mm -hmm. (laughs) so I heard that like your parents were like hella into karaoke and shit like that do you accredit like any of their karaoke passion to your success in music right now no (laughs) no No, because like all my other brothers and sisters like they can't not to say they can't sing but like they don't you know what I mean so I I don't know like I haven't always been as confident as I am now like Mm -hmm. even back in the days when my parents would do karaoke all the time and I would sing karaoke too like I've always been I was always really shy and never like I never like just allowed myself to shine because I was afraid of being different so like now it's definitely took me a long time to get to where I am to where I'm like fuck it you know what I mean I'm like I'm a star like I know what I'm capable of and if I keep downing myself every time like I'm never gonna reach my full potential and so it uh, like I'm still working on that you know like but my confidence level has like exponentially increased since the first time I ever made music until now. Like I know, like, I don't know, you know, like I just, I've definitely become more confident than I was. Um, yeah. Cause even my parents, like back then, like they knew I like, liked to sing and stuff, but, um, they never fostered that, you know, they never were like, okay, let's, let's get you to do this or whatever. And they knew I had a good voice, but it wasn't, it wasn't, they didn't want me to do that, obviously. Yeah. So yeah. I love the fact that you brought up like confidence and everything. Cause I feel like that kind of ties into like the next question I wanted to ask you is that it just from like going on your social media and kind of like doing a little bit of research and everything like that, it definitely mm-hmm. seems like you heavily fuck with self-care. Like what are some mm-hmm. things you do to practice self-care for yourself? Um, that's a hard question. Um, I like to, because, you know, social media can be really damaging to your health sometimes, Um, especially if, you know, your photo doesn't do well or your video doesn't do well. Um, But I think for me, surrounding myself with like-minded people and people who really, really support you, like, you know, the the close friends that I do have, you know, that make music or do something music related, I think is so important to my mental health because anytime that I'm feeling down, like I'm always feeling lifted by these individuals because they always just like not even compliment me, but just like kind of bring me back down to earth. You know what I mean? Like Twee, you're doing this, you're doing this. Like who else do you know is doing that? You know what I mean? Like it's definitely uh, grounding to have people like that in your life. Um, And then also having people in that like that in your life sometimes will just they'll just tell you like okay you need to not be on social media like right now like <laughs> give me your give me your phone you know what i mean um i've started to implement more like self talks with myself mm-hmm. as well and so it's kind of silly but like you know if you look in the mirror tell yourself like you're beautiful or you're worthy you know like you are worthy of success and 
you can fucking do this. You know what I mean? And sometimes it's a little bit silly looking at yourself in, in the mirror and telling yourself this, but it does make you feel like, like it, it makes you feel better about yourself, whether you believe it or not. Like it does have a very powerful effect. Um, and then also just staying active. Like I find that when I'm um, sedentary, like I just, or sedentary, is it sedentary or sedentary? I don't know. I'll be honest, I've never heard that word before. Okay, so it's like <laughs> when you're not active, basically. Um, I tend to be more anxious. I'm a very like anxious person. And it's funny because although music has been like amazing, music has also been like the, the devil when it comes to social anxiety and anxiety in general. Like I've definitely noticed that I've had anxiety when music got more serious, mm -hmm. you know? So um, when I work out or when I do something for myself to make myself happy, I find that the anxiety subsides a little bit and I'm able to kind of just keep moving on with my life. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just like self-care stuff in terms of like exercise or just staying away from social media, um, giving yourself pep talks along the way. Um, yeah, because there's moments where I feel like, like, this is too much. Like, I, I, I don't know how many times I can tell you that I was like, I'm going to quit music. Like, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. Yeah. You know, it's too much. Um, but I know that, like, deep down, that's not what I really want. And I think I'd be even more um, sad not making music for the rest of my life than if I was making music. So it's just, um, yeah, just finding, like, different things that make me happy. Even if it's just getting myself a yerba mate or a coffee or whatever and just having good people in your corner like all the people in my corner right now like just are amazing like they make me feel so good about myself um and there's never a day where I'm sitting in my sadness or my anxiety for too long when they're around so I think that's important to have good people in your corner uh, you know we are uh, very similar personality wise yeah <laughs> yo you know what i might be a scorpio because there's like so many times during this whole interview where i was all where you said something about yourself i was like Nigga. that's me <laughs> like yeah, <that's> me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah man that's cool so, uh when you were talking i noticed that you mentioned that you got more anxiety when your music got like got bigger and it was doing more successful uh mm -hmm. you feel like it went like that because like you had more at stake yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, it's always about, like, one-upping yourself, you know? You always want to think stuff. Yeah, like, I always want to just progress as an artist. Um, and sometimes if a song doesn't do as well as you think it... Like, so, honestly, sometimes songs don't do as well as you hope, even though you love the song. But then a song that you don't really love will just do incredible, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So it's, like, the... Like, the... I don't know, I guess the disappointment sometimes, mm -hmm. or if a song doesn't start off as well as you want, or you got this many streams one day and then the next day it goes down. And so you're just like, oh fuck, you know? Yeah. So it's so crazy about that too, because, cause I feel very similarly to that. Like I've definitely mm -hmm. had things like that happen on a much smaller scale. <laughs> no, <laughs> to you. I'm, I'm no kidding. small <laughs> scale. But um, thank you. I appreciate that. But uh, I've definitely felt that too. But the thing is, like, when that happens, we kind of feel like the world is over. Like, everything is, like, everything is going wrong. Like, it's just like, well, this is the end now. But the thing is that there's so many different variables that could happen that could mm -hmm. lead to more success. Like, you can make another song that did way better. Like, look, you just have, like, Vapor Up pop off and it's, like, doing incredible numbers right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. And things like that. Or other things, like, with uh, Lizzo. Like, it took her, like, a year for, um, what's the song called? Truth Hurts? Truth Hurts to pop off. Like, that song. Crazy. Yeah, that song came out a year prior to it blowing up. And then it, like, I'm sure in the moment she was probably feeling like, uh, put so much hard work into this. Like, I wish it would have done better. And yeah. Then it later gets used in a TV show and then it's just everywhere, billboard. And it's like her right. most successful song. So it's just things like that that are really a testament to just being like, yo, anything can happen. So you don't need to sit here and worry about one certain thing. That's true. Like, and Charlie tells me this all the time. He says that it's a marathon, not a sprint. Mm -hmm. And I, I think those, those words hold so true to my life because I'm always 
like wanting like that instant gratification, but then instant gratification isn't long lasting, you know? So you have to be okay with the slow race and, and that comes with being consistent. So when you're consistent and you're putting out quality content and you're talented, like I, I just think there's no way that it's not going to happen for you. It's just a matter of time. Um, and that's how I feel about things. I'm like, I'm just going to keep doing my thing and keep working hard and keep putting out content and keep interacting with my fans and keep building my, bra my brand and my fan base. And you know what I mean? Because I know it's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. So mm -hmm. I just try to stay positive like that because sometimes it's, it's very easy. You, it's like, you got to hold yourself accountable because it's very easy to fall into that negative mindset. Yeah, definitely. Especially with like instant gratification, it's a very slippery slope because it can easily put you into a dark hole. You know what I mean? mm -hmm. It's so mm -hmm. easy to like just, and then you're you're in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's always like it there, sucks it's so because you have to, to be. Yeah, you have to be happy with like what you have right now, mm -hmm. because if you're not, you're constantly wanting more. Mm -hmm. You know, you're constantly like, oh, I have one thousand followers now. I want two. You know what I mean? Like, why don't you nurture those 1,000 followers? Mm -hmm. Because to me, 1,000 followers who listen to your music <laughs> daily is more important than having 10,000 followers and only 10 people listening to your music. You know, I see, it's crazy because I, on Instagram, like, I see so many people with so many followers that haven't done a good job at nurturing their fan base. And so you go onto their music or their Spotify and they have, like, a thousand monthly listeners, you know, and it's like, where is the connection there, you know? And so I think, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know where I was going there, but yeah. I feel like you have a really good balance with like your monthly listeners and, and, um, yeah, your followers on social media and stuff like that. Like, yeah, I feel like it's all very, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no. I, I just feel like it's very maintainable, but also like not like, I'm not going to get burnt out. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's very, it, it's going at a good pace. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's definitely like a lot of people who have like a lot of followers for nothing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. You have a good amount of followers, but then what's, what's the conversion rate? Like, what, like what are you able to produce to those followers and like what's going to happen afterwards? But yeah, with, with you, you have a good amount of followers and then you have an incredible conversion rate too when it comes to like your music because all social media really yeah. is, is just like a way to take these people over to where you want to get them you know yeah I mean? it's a medium yeah for it's sure perfect, perfect way to put it perfect, it's a perfect way to put it yeah because at the end of the day like you have to make yourself valuable like if your goal is to get signed by a label like you have to like have an engaging fan base you know, no one's going to want to sign you if you don't have any streams or even if you don't have streams, but you have like a following that will buy out all your shows or, you know what I mean? He'll buy out your merch every time you drop something or, you know, like that's very important. And yeah. it's just being I, like, go ahead. Oh, no, no, go ahead. Keep on going. No, I was just like, it's just being profitable, you know, like although you are an individual, like you have to also think in like um like a business mindset you know yeah i'm glad that you brought that up because i feel like a lot of people don't understand how like a lot of these like corporations work mm -hmm. and it's like they're not gonna at the end of the day it's a business and they have to invest their money and that's really what they're mm -hmm. doing when they're signing people for all of these like loans not well, right they're, they're loans but we we call yeah. them you know what i mean they're just yeah. like glorified like like loans and shit like that right so like when people are doing that they want to make sure that you could do what you were saying where like people will exactly buy, they're not going to invest their money into anything that isn't already proven itself to be profitable oh exactly what's in it for them you know like exactly. that's what it is at the end of the day like yeah. yeah like we would love to live in a perfect world where it's like oh well we just want to take the people with talent and then make it go good you mm -hmm. know what I mean? But yeah. at the end of the day, it's like business. We're playing with, with people's monies and lives and families and stuff like that. So that's why people have to worry about the money more. And they'd be like, okay, well, I'm investing in you because you have an engaging fan base. People are actually buying what you sell and everything like that. And that's why people like Daniel Bagolis and all these like YouTubers are able to get signed while there's a whole bunch of wildly talented people who can't get signed. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. that, 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 that 
that fan base and that engagement is so important. You know yeah, I mean? it's Which really, really so good. that you focus on that so heavily because you, yeah. you obviously have seen the importance behind that. Yeah, I tried to, um, somebody once told me that if you want to be one of the greats, you have to find those people that you admire and that you look up to and look at their trends. Look at what they were doing before they popped off. You know, there is a trend going on. So if you are able to locate what that trend is, what worked for them, try it. You know what I mean? Like it's all, you're never going to know if you fail, fine, but at least you tried. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's like, for me, like, I think just trying different things, even if they don't work, but there could be a strategy that like, holy shit, this was the cheat code, you know, like, this is what I'm going to apply to every drop or whatever. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely, I don't know. Definitely yeah. crazy. Yeah, for real. Just like, like, the history repeats itself for real. Exactly. Exactly. So if you, if you look up to someone, look at their first post and what they're doing now, you know, check for a similar trend that they've been doing or whatever. And so I like to do that from time to time. Like if I am really like an artist, I'll go to their page and I'll like, okay, so what did they do before? And like, how did they get to where they are now? You know? Okay. So, yeah. Right. So we're going to move to a different question, a little bit lighter. I'm going to throw a hypothetical question out to you real quick. Okay. So you're on your way to the studio. Uh, you only have time to lay down one guest verse. When you go into the studio, there's three different rooms. Mm -hmm. A, Ariana Grande. Room B, Britney Spears. Room B, Kehlani. Sheesh. Where are you going in to lay down your one guest verse? <laughs> They're all so talented. I know. That's why I picked the question. <laughs> I wish you said Ty Dolla Sign because I would just say Ty Dolla Sign. Oh, really? Okay. I love him. Like, I think he is just, like, like. Highly underrated. He's just the perfect, the perfect voice. It's, like, buttery but gritty. And I just feel like, I heard someone say that he's, like, Parsley on a, on a song. Like, you just <laughs> sprinkle him and he's just, like, it's a hit, you know? Yeah. And that's how I feel about him. But, like, if I would, I don't know, like. Kaylani's amazing. Ariana Grande is amazing. But I'd probably have to go with Britney Spears just because, like, she's kind of the GOAT. Like, she's the person who inspired me to sing in the first place. You know, like, I remember having, like, all of her, all of her albums. Mm -hmm. And, like, just being in the garage, like, singing her songs. Like, that's all I did. Like, after school, I'd go home, put in her CD in the little radio thing and just listen to it like start to finish mm -hmm. so i feel like just to bring it back full circle like i would have to i'd have to i'd have to collab with britney spears man all right it's a, hey, honestly there was no wrong answer there there's no wrong <laughs> there's no wrong answer because they're all crazy oh man i could have won with each each one like hey lonnie is like i just love that she's from the bay and she's just true to herself she's also like um, like so talented you know and Ariana Grande, like, she's already up there. You know, she's doing her thing, and she, her voice is just – I think she's one of the best vocalists um, to date. And, like, it'd be such an honor to work with her as well. Um, only only reason why I would stray away from, like, working with her is that people say, like, our voices are very similar. Um, mm -hmm. So I try to stay away from, like, collabing with anybody that has, like, very similar voices. Yeah. So, sure. yeah. For sure. Crazy story I heard about Ariana Grande. It, it was like in like a little beat breakdown video, and like it was uh -huh. like the the producers were talking about like the creation of, I want to say Seven Rings. Uh -huh. <laughs> apparently, when they it was like three people on one beat, and apparently there was one chord that was like messed up in the whole song, and like uh -huh. the producers like noticed it. She came in, she listened to the song, she's like, "There's one chord at specifically this moment in time." That's like messed up, and it was like literally off by one note. So like they literally that's crazy. transposed one note up, and then that was it. And like she was able to catch that, especially when there was like three like award-winning producers that didn't catch that. That's funny. Wow, but, I didn't know that. Yeah, it was it was wild. That was like that things like that really cement like Ariana Grande in my head, where like she, like of how talented she is. Yeah, I mean, like she started off, I think, doing Broadway, so she's just like really musically inclined and. 
um, very well versed when it comes to like, um, I don't know how to say this, like, you know, like reading music and all of that. Like she's, yeah. she's obviously able to read music. She plays the piano, I think. And she's just really well-rounded, you know, with music. Um, so I, I don't put that past her that she did that. Yeah. If someone told me she had perfect cool. pitch, I'd believe them. Like 100%. What? If someone told me she had perfect pitch, I'd believe them 100%. Oh, yeah. She's, yeah. like, amazing. She sings, like, effortless, effortlessly. Yeah. She also, one of, one of the, the few people who made it from, like, a, I would consider it, like, a child star, like, child actor. Yeah. No, definitely. Victorious, yeah. She definitely I mean, did. And she wasn't even the star of that show. <laughs> true. That is true. And that's she, like, really fucking made, like, moved herself up. Yeah. And she, she honestly, like, surpassed her legacy on that TV show, too. Like, mm -hmm. by a long mile. Yeah. Now it's to the point where, like, people are coming up and they're, like, they know her from the music and not from the show now. Yeah, Which no, that's awesome. They're, like, a huge goal for people who do that whole, like, TV yeah. music thing. Like, yeah, no, yeah. for sure. Yeah, because a lot of times you get stuck into what you, like, are known for. Which is why it's so important to kind of like brand yourself in a way that is memorable and people don't just know you as a certain person, you know? Like I try not to do, like I wanted to make a YouTube channel where I just sing like original, or I'm sorry, like covers and stuff, but I didn't want to be like a cover artist, mm -hmm. you know? I wanted to be able to like make my own music, but also still be able to cover like other songs. Yeah. Cause I know a lot of like YouTubers that I used to watch in the day, like they're like, when I think of them, I think of like YouTube, you know? And I, I wouldn't necessarily go and listen to like their original music, but yeah, it's just all about like not wanting to be boxed in, I guess, to one particular thing. Yeah, are you huh? familiar with D-Pride? With who? Uh, D-Pride. I feel like, yeah, back in the day, right? Yeah, yeah, so he actually had that issue too and I heard him, speak about that and it's just really like a hard stigma to get out of because yeah when as like the cover person people kind of just don't even want to listen to your original music they just kind of want to hear yeah. the renditions of other music right right you really just spoke on like how that's like such a hard transition to do and it is you've done like a lot of covers as well like what's your favorite cover that you've done um Ooh, i don't know I like which one that the, you just snapped on. You're like, man, this nigga spitting. You know what I mean? Which one did you? Which one did you hit? And you're like, damn, I. Right. I don't know. They're like, I really like the one I did with. Um, it's called Boyfriend by Ariana Grande. That one was good. Um, but the one that really popped off was, um, also by Ariana Grande. It's what was it called? Like Good Night and Go? No, what was it? Fuck, I forgot what song it was called. But it was, like, not my recent one that I did, but the one right before it. Okay. And that was the first one where I tried, like, recording my cover instead of singing it live. Mm. But that one, like, went crazy. So, I don't know. It's hard to say. Like, I've definitely had some covers that I've posted. And then a week later, I'm like, oh, my God, that didn't sound so good. Let me ar <laughs> let me archive that, you know? But for the most part, the ones that are on my page, like, I do really love. Mm -hmm. um, they're all very different, you yeah. know, like, different vibes and stuff. So it's hard to say. I don't know. You know what's so crazy about the whole archiving thing, too, is that you probably sat there and be like, eh, I don't know about that. And you archived it. Well, then other people who listen to it are like, this is the craziest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> there's probably other people who loved it and put it on repeat and shit like that too that's true that's true preference man like yeah. i can th that's why it's like you can release a song that you're not too like like you like it but you're not like in love with it mm -hmm. and it'll just pop off you know yeah i've definitely had that experience with like beats too mm -hmm. like i'm sending beats to artists and stuff and there was one time in particular where i was just like okay these two beats crazy i have never done anything better than this and then the yeah. first one i put in i was kind of unsure about it just because like oh, like in this specific situation i was like oh, this one's kind of boring right what i didn't realize at the time is that like since it was more minimalistic it left more room for the artist mm -hmm. so when i sent it the two crazy beats like she just didn't really care about them but the one that i thought was kind of boring she was all like yo i made something right now to it and i was like are you talking about that's crazy yeah that, that's always how it happens right yeah that's always how it happens 
Uh -huh. I showed one of my sisters too, cause like she does music and we're like we're working on stuff right now too. And I showed her the beat just like as a, a final, like, let me just make sure before I send it out. And she uh -huh. was like, no, what are you talking about? Like, that's funny. <laughs> I was just thinking of melodies right now. And it's just so crazy how we can just sit there and think of like, okay, this is what is going to be acceptable for everyone. And then this is what not what is not going to be acceptable acceptable mm -hmm. to everyone and then it can be completely switched the other way around and yeah and that's why it's good to have different people in your circle to kind of like tell you uh hey switch this up right here you know what i mean or to give you insight because i i honestly think producers are so amazing because you guys just come up with mel well i guess it's the same with like songwriters but like producers you guys just like i don't know like just think of fucking anything or a melody and then you just put it out and or like make it, I don't know, it's so crazy. It's just because we're in different worlds because we think the same thing about singers and songwriters. That's true, I guess. Yeah, because we'll be sitting there making the beat and we'll be like, just like, I'm sure there's a lot of other producers who do it, but like you mm -hmm. kind of like sit there and try to envision what the artist would do on it. And so right. like, we can't envision that. And then someone would get on and be like, da -da 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 -da, and be like. Yeah, you're like, oh shit, that? I don't know what, I could sound like that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's because we're in different worlds. And, like, honestly, like, I love collaboration, too, because, like, no two ears hear the same thing. Mm-hmm. That, and, 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 like, that's why I love it because we'll just be sitting there, like, trying to work on this, and then someone else will hear it and just flip it a completely different way. Mm-hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I'm sure the person who made Vapor Rub, like, the Austin Sexton, I'm sure he didn't expect you to snap, like, on it like that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure no. you be expecting, like, something a little bit more trappy, but you came on it with the... Uh, the, uh, right, right. Everyone, yeah, everyone says that too. Like it's a very trap-like beat. Yeah. But it's funny because like when I heard the beat, I didn't even think it was like trap, like at all. Two years don't hear the same thing. You know, like <laughs> I just heard the melodies that I came up with and didn't really hear that. But then like it's funny because like now that I released a song and everyone's like the reviews and stuff, they're like, yeah, it's very trappy. But then she comes on with these like angelic harmonies or melodies and whatever and i'm like what i didn't even know it was it sounded like that but then yeah. now i'm like hearing it, i was like okay yeah it's kind of hard you know it's the contrast it's like it's like when you put like a little bit of sea salt on top of chocolate it's just like yo it's the contrast. why did i just <laughs> make chocolate chip cookies last night with sea salt on it for the first time that's so that funny exactly that you that. that's crazy <laughs> yes and it was actually really good oh uh, yeah I, it, I, I imagine yeah huh <laughs> I, I could imagine it was really good, yeah. Oh, so good. Like chocolate chunks with little sea salt sprinkle on top. Oh, wait, uh, what, type of, wait what type of cookie person are you? Are you like the, the crispy cookie or like the chewy, like gooey one? The second one. Yeah, obviously. Anybody who goes with the crispy joints, they're low-key like... Like, I'm you know the Chips like, Ahoy? Like, you, know the, the, you know the crunchy Chips Ahoy? Like, I don't like those. Yeah, those ain't it. You're a crispy one? You would be. Sorry. He's saying he likes the crispy ones. No, I, I like them soft and like gooey and delicious. Yeah, it's like insanely better, especially like when they're like still low-key hot too. Come on. Yes. Literally perfection. <laughs> All right. So let's wrap this whole thing up with one last question. No, I'm having so much fun. <laughs> Honestly, it's I was like the first you. time that I've like been able to talk to to people <laughs> <laughs> honestly i would love to but i gotta like leave for work soon i'm kidding it's all good <laughs> i'm so sorry i'm honestly no, it's all good. Good. i'm I'm kidding, I'm I'm kidding. A great time. no no i had a really good time actually like thank you That's surprisingly because i don't really like to do interviews mm -hmm. because i know myself and i ramble a lot but this was really easy and i didn't feel nervous at all mm -hmm. so that was nice really mm -hmm. good. that was actually like the the one goal i had to get through this interview is to make sure like you felt comfortable and you were cool with talking and that I didn't hit you with like the generic boring no, there, things. It was awesome. It, yeah, it definitely got my brain thinking. So thank you for that. Okay. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs> you feel me? So All right, what's the hard closing question? It's not even really like a hard closing question. It's just like something I would love to end off this episode with with everybody is I just want to get one piece of advice from you to someone else who is also in the music industry that's kind of like coming up. So what mm -hmm. advice do you think would be most valuable to someone who's just kind of starting out with their music career? Okay. Um, I think just do it. 
first off, don't put, don't let your fears stop you from doing something. Um, and I think don't be afraid of failure, you know, don't be afraid of trying different things and going outside of your box because you never know that one time that you went outside the box could be a defining moment for you. Um, and I think surrounding yourself with people who are like-minded and who believe in you are very important. Um, you can do it alone, but it's better to do it with a team, you know? Um, and like, I get a lot of actually DMs of people saying like, Hey, like, I really love, I really love to sing, but like, I'm afraid of blah, 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 but I really want to start making my own music. Like what kind of advice do you have for me? And my first advice is always just do it. Do not be afraid of just doing it. Um, you people are you like especially with the internet nowadays you can be very resourceful um if you don't have production you can find somebody that you know what i mean like if you like an artist that are that's in your hometown and they tag a producer or whatever hit up the producer you know you may have to pay for beats but at least you start off with that type of relationship and then you can build it on from there and maybe you guys can collab together in the future but you have to start somewhere you can't nag yourself and just say like oh I can't do this and I can't do that like you're never gonna be able to if, with that attitude so it's like just do it just don't be afraid of failing you know like I failed so many times I've gotten the word no so many times from just like you can get a no from somebody so many times but you continue to work hard and eventually that no turns into a yes. So it's just really just doing it. Don't stop yourself from doing it because you're scared, you know? Oh, this is one thing that I always tell people. You only have one life. If you're out there trying to impress others or you're doing something because your parents want you to do it, what, what kind of life is that? At the end of the day, when you are on your deathbed, can you really look back and say that you fulfilled your life or you had a, a fulfilling life? Like, think about that because you could die any moment. You can die tomorrow. You, coronavirus can take your ass out if you're not careful, you know, like what, make yourself happy, you know, because at the end of the day, you only have one life, you know, like this is your life. Like it's nobody else's to live. So who cares what your parents are saying? Who cares what your friends are saying? And who cares what your haters are saying? Like, this is your life. And eventually these people are gonna catch on, but if you don't start now, they're never going to. So just just do it. Sorry, that was long-winded, but Ooh, I'm very, I'm so <laughs> this is passionate the about that. Keep on talking, please. <laughs> no, I'm so passionate about that because like, that's what, kept me from doing what I wanted for so long. Mm -hmm. My parents wanted me to be a doctor. My, I was afraid of being different because I was afraid of what other people would think. Um, I always just wanted to, you know, be a little like, like I wanted to just fit in, you know what I mean? And when doing that, I just dimmed my light. I didn't allow myself to be the best version of myself because I was afraid of what other people would think. And it got to a point where I was like, tweet, what is really going to make you happy? Like, you really need to think about this. You know, you only have one life. So make it count. And that's what I did. I fucking quit my job, moved to LA. And I was just like, I'm going to live my life the way I want to live it. And I'm not going to let anybody stop me from doing that. Like, my parents, thankfully, have, have come around now. But in the beginning, when I moved to LA, they were just like, why are you there, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, like, it's it's not about them. Like at the end of the day, your parents are going to love you and they only want you to do what's going to make you happy. And although it's not conventional, it's not their life to live. You know, like if you keep doing what you love, your parents are eventually going to see that your friends are eventually going to see that. And they're going to like, hopefully not too late, hop on and support you. And you don't want people who don't support you in your corner anyways. So it's like, you know yeah amazing so, <laughs> so great amazing i love that i couldn't agree with you anymore <laughs> it was just just perfect you feel yeah me? <laughs> just just start don't be afraid like what is there okay 
if you're scared of doing something, if you're nervous, I think it's like, somebody told me it's just your vanity. It's like how you want to be perceived or you're afraid of what other people think. It's your own vanity, you know, like don't, don't let that stop you from doing what you want to do in all areas of life whether it's music, whether it's becoming a doctor, whether it's being a fucking pilot or whatever the fuck you want to do, just do it because it's your fucking life. You know what I mean? Like you want to be happy, you know, like life is not about fitting into everybody's like idea of what's normal, you know, like fuck social construct. Like, you know, don't be afraid to be different because eventually these these people are going to envy you for being different and they're going to wish that they were able to do that you know mm -hmm. so ended off with positivity uh -huh. um thank you for allowing me to be on this podcast i had a great time and um if anyone is out there just kind of not knowing what they want to do or whatever um just sit down and think about it and create a plan and just put it into action. Nice. Such great words to like end it off on. So also I would like to say thank you for spending time with me and talking to me uh, through this little Zoom call. And I just, I really, I really just appreciate it so much because you're taking time out of your day to like. No, of course. Like, thank you so much for even keeping me in mind. No, keep, thank you for keeping me in mind. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, I had a really good time. Yeah, same here. Like, it I was like, like, I got to know you a little bit better. And I hope that whoever gets to listen to this gets to know me a little bit better. And yeah, yeah, definitely. I think it's great. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Cool. So with that being said, my name is Devin. I'll go by Infinite or Proud by Infinite. And this was Kicking It with Infinite. Peace out. Peace out, guys. <laughs>